Good afternoon, and welcome to Mid-Monday Ministry Moments with Marie. I thank God for you. All is welcome. Thank you for joining me in this um, study that we're going to do today. Um, I don't know about you, but I certainly have a testimony. You can probably hear the uh, raspiness in my voice. Um, I coughed until my sides were sore, but I asked the Lord to give me enough strength and to soothe that cause so that I, so that I could fulfill this commitment today. I pray you had a good week and a celebratory Sunday. I wasn't able to go. My husband and I, we, he stayed home with me. To, um, he was my doctor. He's the Iron Man. Amen. But we did watch the service um, on social media. So I thank God for social media. Amen. Um, if this live is a blessing to you, which I think that it is, um, then share it. Um, share it with others. Um, and if they cannot get it on Facebook, you can go to my YouTube page and type in all one word, Evangelist Marie Jenkins Arthur, and my page will come up and you can view this live and other lives that have preceded it. Let us go to the throne room and um, thank God for this day. Then we're going to get into our study. Amen. Amen. And pray for me as we move forward. Father, thank you so, so very much for a brand new day, beautiful day we've never seen before. It might look like yesterday, but this is a new day because you said you give brand new mercy daily, which makes this a brand new day. It's another opportunity to get it right. It is another opportunity to serve you and your people. I thank you um, for this opportunity and your word and those ears that listen to the words that come from heaven, just using me as a vessel. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord. You're my strength. You are my redeemer. And I pray that this word and all others will meet you at your point of need. Amen. Today's um, subject is residue. Safe or saved? And the scripture that undergirds this is found in Luke 16 and 13. And this is what Jesus said. He said, no servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold on to one and despise the other. No one can serve God and mammon. So you can't serve God and want to hold on to the practices of sin, which is Satan. It's either one or the other. Amen. So, what is residue? Because it leads this discussion today. It is the defining or identifying patterns and traces of you that are left behind. Same as when, if you uh, take a bath, um, and you get out of that water and release the water, usually the residue that is left can sometimes be in the bubbles of the, um, of the, uh, in the tub, and the bubbles sometimes will hold the dirt or the residue that came from your body. Amen? Now, according to forensic, um, psychology, they said that a residue is a natural coating of oil and other biological materials that cover our skin. So when, when it is pressed on the surface, it leaves a pattern behind 
or an impression of ourselves. The prints include dead skin cells. This, this is what's left behind. Dead skin cells and fine lines of oil and other molecules that can be visible two ways. I'm just going to give you two ways. When they are coated with a dark powder or when infrared light is applied. So when we see these crime shows and they're trying to um, get the prints, if there's fingerprints, you see them either dusting or they add that infrared light and they will show up. Amen. So we have a lot to unpack today. It's very interesting. And I want you to um, lock in and shoulder up. And we are going to address all three of these parts. Residue, safe, or saved. Now the subject suggests this. <clears throat> Whose side are you leaning on? Because if you say safe or safe, then that means there is a choice there. So whose side are you leaning on? Do you think you're safe? Might be. Or are you safe knowing that you're safe? Mm -hmm. The Bible lets us know in Revelations 3, 15 and 16, Jesus was um, giving this word to John, who was out on the Isle of Patmos. And he had addressed the seven churches. And this particular church that he addressed was the church of Sardis. And he says, I know thy works, that thou art neither hot or cold. I would that you would be cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So, let me ask you again, because this is self-reflective. Are you safe? Am I safe? Or saved? Let's explore. Some may have an issue with this diagnosis, amen, that we're getting ready to embark upon. But one can find the answer in the parable of the ten <clears throat> virgins found in Matthew 25, 1 through 13. We can apply the word, and the word will find you where you are at. So now, it opens up with, at that time, the kingdom. We are in that time. We are in the time of the kingdom. Amen? So it is, it is talking to us now because we are in the time of kingdom work. Amen. It says, <clears throat> so the kingdom, he says, the times that we're in is like ten virgins <clears throat> who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Amen. Five of them, the Bible says, are foolish. And five, he said, are wise. So what made the wise ones wise? Because they not only took their lamps, but they took all along with their lives. They had a backup plan. Amen. Amen. They weren't just running on the fuel that they had, but they had a backup plan. They had some reserve. Amen. So the bridegroom... The Bible says was a long time coming. And because of that, they got weary, restless, and fell asleep. Do not get weary and restless in this time of the kingdom. Because if you endure to the end, you shall reap. Amen. So the, the word continues to go on and it says at midnight. A cry was made, and the bridegroom cometh. Go and meet him. 
So the ten virgins arose, trimmed their lamps. And you know, when you, those lamps that they had were lanterns that had those wicks. And the, when you trim a wick um, from it burning, I would suspect they may have burned all night. So now they're going to trim them, and even if they didn't burn all night, that when they put it out, then to relight it, you really need to trim it. Why? Because it gives you a brighter light, a cleaner light. Amen. <clears throat> it's not cloudy. So the five foolish didn't have enough oil to make the trip. They didn't have no reserve. They just thought, you know, <clears throat> I got it. I got it. I don't need anything else. Mm -hmm. So they asked the wise ones, give me some of your oil. Now, <clears throat> they said, no, this is what made them wise as well. Go purchase your own oil. You can't get to heaven on my prayers. My father was a Pentecostal preacher. But I had to learn Jesus for myself. Amen. So they said, no, you go buy your own oil. Go get what you need to get to where the bridegroom is. Mm -hmm. So as the five foolish ones went to the market, the bridegroom was there and he took the ones that were ready. And that was the five wise virgins. And they went into the marriage supper, and the Bible says he closed the door. Time is up. You had all this time in the kingdom to do and prepare for when the king, the bridegroom, comes. Amen. And you fooled around. You felt, you know, I, I know I'm good. And so the five foolish cried out, um, but it was too late. They had missed the bridegroom. How sad. Their identity was not recognized. I don't want to get there. And he says, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity, or that I never even knew you. Why? Because you had no oil. Mm -hmm. You were calling on my name. But you weren't wise. They thought they were safe. The five foolish. They thought they were safe. So that, that speaks to me and says, I can't think that I'm saved. I can't assume <clears throat> that no evil have I done. I'm on my way to heaven. But each and every day, I need to repent. I need to do my first work over. I need to be wise so that when the clarion call comes, I can be caught up to meet him. Amen. These five foolish had the residue of self-righteousness upon them. The residue of arrogance and complacentness, being complacent. They had the residue, I don't need to bring oil with me. Mm -hmm. They had that residue. Amen. 2 Corinthians 11 and 14 says, For Satan himself is transformed into, transformed into an angel of light. So, you know, don't be um, fooled. Satan can transfer, him, transfer himself into light, not the light of God. His light is not as bright. He doesn't have the oil that we have in Christ. But if you don't watch, the Bible said he'll fool the very elect. Amen. So those foolish virgins laying there with the wise one, they all looked the same. But when the call came, the separation came. So they weren't as safe as they thought they were. So just because you go to church, 
just because you shout and, and, and look like, act like, but when the call comes, there will be a separation. So the lamp <clears throat> is no good without the oil. All that you're doing, that you think that's being uh, effective, it is, it, it is dead works without the oil. And the oil represents the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So your safety without the Holy Ghost is in jeopardy. Now let, let's turn to, to, let's turn and shift our thoughts to Peter. Because there are different ways that um, we feel we're safe. And, and and we're doing good works. Um, we're, 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 we have accepted the call. And we are about our father's business. Uh -huh. Let's look at Peter. Now Peter had been converted. From his nasty, stinky, drunk, cussing, fighting, stubbornness. He had been converted from I can do it, denying Christ, being a coward, um, running on the day that Jesus was crucified and hid behind a door, in a, in a, in a room behind the door, being outspoken, oh, I'll never deny you. Mm-hmm. Ignorant fisherman, he was converted from an ignorant fishing man to an apostle. So now, Peter's testimony is I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and I am an ambassador for Christ. Amen. He was converted. He, he accepted the call. So Jesus can take the most raggedy life and make it righteous. Amen. So Peter emerged from the upper room experience, preaching to the devoted men from all nations about Jesus the Christ. And the Bible says 3,000 souls were saved because this was all part of that big celebration they did known as the Passover. So those men that were there, when, when Peter got finished preaching to them, not cussing, not fighting, but preaching, Jesus and him crucified, all of them gave their life to Christ. So Peter, as we read on in Acts, he joins up with John. And they went to the temple, and going to the temple, they encountered a beggar. And he was begging for arms or for money. And Peter, strong and, and bold, um, tells the beggar, Silver and gold, I have none. But such as I have, I give to thee. Amen. The Bible says that he prayed. Then he took the man's hand and lifted him up. And immediately the man walked. Amen. The Holy Ghost was working through Peter. And when you continue to read, people were putting their aprons and clothing in the street for, for him to walk on. So just the, that, that they would, could be touched by him. They would want to get into his shadow because God was using him mightily. Amen. He was highly anointed. And the same way he was in sin, God flipped that was the same way he was for kingdom work. He was bold and brassy. Amen. He would step out on faith. He wasn't afraid of the enemy. So Peter was threatened not to preach. Said, we don't want to hear that. These are the Jewish leaders. Amen. So they imprisoned him. And even when they locked him up and locked him out, the Lord sent an angel and opened the prison doors. 
Release the chains that they had on him. When you belong to God, can't nobody imprison you. Amen. And he escaped. Um, why? Because he was protected by the Lord. In the 10th chapter of Acts, as we continue to read about Peter, Peter went up one day um, upon the housetop to pray. Like probably any other day. This might have been a ritual like we, we do um, in the mornings. We pray and maybe during our coffee we do meditations and so forth. So Peter went up on the rooftop, as he probably always has done, to pray. And he was hungry, but he fell asleep. And he went into this trance. And he saw heaven open and certain vessels descending upon him. Now, it just said he was hungry. So the, the um, um, vision that the Lord gave him dealt with animals, right, right? Because he was hungry. And it would get his attention. So there were all manners of these four uh, footed beasts, the wild ones, the creeping ones, the fowls of the air that fly. Mm -hmm. And so after he saw all these animals, big, small, in between, the Lord spoke to him. And we like it when we hear from the Lord. But I don't think this is what he had anticipated. The Lord says, Peter, rise, kill, and eat. See, because you're hungry. And I'm the one that supplies all your needs. Mm -hmm. But Peter was floored. And he disobeyed the Lord. Now, you got to think this is the same Peter that was uh, locked in jail. God sent his angels to get him. He could he heal people, prayed for a man, took his hand to raise him up, and he just walked. Preached in the temple, even when they told him not to. <clears throat> he was strong. He was, I'm on fire for God. But there's going to come a time when you're going to be tested. Amen? So he says, I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Why? Because Peter was a Jew. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Even though God had saved him. And when the Lord saves us, cleans us up, and fills us with the Holy Ghost, that supersedes anything else. Am I Afro-American? Absolutely. My skin is dark. My heritage is dark. Amen. There is slavery in my lineage. But because I am saved, I am now the bride of Christ. That supersedes. I'm still in this life. I'm going to still be recognized as a black woman. But who I really am, I'm the bride of Christ. Amen. So Peter, Peter said, now I've never eaten anything common and unclean. And the Lord rebuked him and says, what I cleanse is clean. I supersede your Jewish heritage. Amen. And don't call anything common that I clean. Amen? So Jesus had an assignment for Peter. Mm -hmm. So this went beyond just him being hungry. This went, to, uh, went beyond just um, rebuking him and letting him know that because I'm in you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you are not your own. Why? Because you've been bought with a price. So I have an assignment for you. I want you to take salvation of the gospel 
to Cornelius. Mm -hmm. Cornelius was not a Jew. He was a Gentile. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, he's a just man. That would be like saying to us, I want you to take um, the gospel over to a country that doesn't even believe in God. They do witchcraft. Mm -hmm. They have their own gods. But I want you to go because there is somebody there who is praying. Jesus said he's a just man. He feareth me. He is of a good report. And he prays. Amen. Lord, have mercy. I know Peter was knocked off his socks. <laughs> so Peter confessed that God is no respecter of person. He had not encountered that before, but now he has. Amen. So if the Lord delivers you, if he sets you free, cleans you up with his blood, puts on his coat of righteousness on you. Stop holding on to old traditions. They're residues. Amen? And this is what Peter had brought over. And sometimes until God gets our attention for, for an assignment that will break all of that down, he will cover us. And all that Peter was doing prior to this, God covered him. Amen. He said, get rid of the residue of sin and pride. And that's exactly what it was. Not only am I saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, but I'm a Jew. Jesus was a Jew. Yeah, but Jesus went to that cross and died for humanity. So if you're going to associate yourself with him, that's how you have to be. Amen. So don't get caught up in pride because you got a big title or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. We have to associate with Christ. We got to walk the walk that he walked. Talk the talk that he talked. Do the work of an evangelist. Do kingdom work. Amen. And kingdom work has no um, limitations as who can come to the kingdom. Who can get saved? We don't determine that. Amen. Our position is to take the gospel, the unadulterated gospel, to the world. So now let's wrap this up, this lesson, with the Hebrew nation that left Egypt. Mm -hmm. It says, after 400 years of slavery, I mean terrible slavery, killing all the boy child, children, beating them, making them um, make straw, I mean make that whatever it is without straw, and how they put those, my husband has actually seen those pyramids. And he said it is it it is a wonder to see these these um, artifacts still standing, and they did not have mas machinery like we did. So those were on the backs of these men, amen. After being enslaved, after the tears and the pain and death, God remembered His people. He remembered what he said to Abraham. Mm -hmm. So he brought them out of Egypt. And one thing I like about this bringing out of Egypt, by the time they were getting ready to leave after that 10th plague, they not only said, get out, but they gave them gold and, and, and things of substance. Amen. Because... What the Lord had said to Pharaoh, let my people go so they can worship me. Well, worship is not just always um, the hand clapping and, 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 and uh, what we say out of our mouth. But it is giving and sharing what we have. All of that is worship. So they didn't leave empty handed. They had a testimony. 
They had a praise. And they had something to offer to the Lord. Okay. So seeing the big, biggest obstacle before them was that Red Sea. And they were staring at death in the face when they were at the, at the brink or the cusp of that Red Sea. What we going to do? Then they could hear death coming in the back of them. Because now Pharaoh has commissioned his army, go get them. Mm -hmm. I changed my mind. Go get them. Mm -hmm. My son is dead. My firstborn is, go get them. So they're sandwiched in between death and a hard, hard place, hard rock. Amen. They murmured and complained. Mm -hmm. And the, the Lord spoke to Moses and said, use what's in your hand. Stretch out your rod. The Bible says when they got to the other side, the army was still after them. So don't think that once you get saved, once God begins to bless you, elevate you, highly anoint you, that Satan isn't after you. Amen. They thought they were safe. Mm -hmm. Until they saw the army coming the same path that they had came. But this is why I am happy about the God that we serve. He, he's the one that has the master plan. Mm -hmm. So he closed it. And he allowed them to see what he did. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the Bible says, vengeance is mine. The Lord said that. Sometimes we see how he corrects situations. Sometimes we don't. But I tell you what, I believe if I had been there and that, that sea opened, and I'm on the other side, drag around, and I see the army coming, and he closed those waters. Man, I tell you, I, I, I think I would have been a believer. <laughs> Amen. I've shown sure enough been a believer. But that did not satisfy them. Mm -hmm. They murmured and complained. Now we don't have no food. Mm-hmm. They murmured and complained. We don't have pure water to drink. Mm -hmm. We should have stayed in Egypt. Ooh, that's like a slap in God's face. We haven't seen Moses in 40 days. So we're going to make our own God. We should have stayed in Egypt. We thought we were safe. Mm -hmm. going to a land that would be ours, that would flow with milk and honey. But we should have stayed in Egypt. Because apparently, we ain't got no plan. We don't know where Moses is at. Don't nobody have any instructions. We just out here. We should have stayed in Egypt. And because they carried that residue, that sin. God brought them out of a place of sin, of contamination, of being a slave to another man. And you gonna tell me because times are a little bit hard right now, we should have stayed in Egypt. Isn't that what we do? The moment we have to go through something, we'll say, I didn't have it like this when I was in the world. I enjoyed my, when I was finger popping and doing all that stuff, I ain't got to put up with this stuff from the church. We do the same thing. They had the residue of Egypt upon them and in them. Amen. And because of that, the Bible says that whole generation that came out of Egypt that brought that residue and the mentality of it, 
the infestation of it mm -hmm. brought the sin with them instead of shaking it off you know being set free no we should have stayed in Egypt the Bible said all of them died right there in the wilderness amen to a new generation emerged so let me conclude with this. According to the text, which says residue, safe or saved. The safest place <clears throat> is in the will of God. That's where your safety allows, is, is, is allowed. People bring, build mansions and fortress, fortresses that have all types of um, uh, security systems, all kind of beams. You, you need your face recognition or your prints, and yet somebody can break through. You think you're safe. People build mansions on the side of hills like in L.A., and a good storm come, and you just wash right on down the hill. Mm -hmm. People have all kind of security guards and guard dogs thinking they're safe. Mm -hmm. But the safest place to be is in Christ. Because he has weapons that Satan, he, Satan can't touch it. He can dispense angels. He can speak, the Bible says he can just speak a word. He can send his word and it will heal you. Mm -hmm. That's the safest place to be. Being saved guarantees your position of safety. Don't be fooled. Amen. Don't let somebody slip you a mickey and tell you that there's another way. There's only one way, and that's through Christ. And then once we, we get in Christ, once he cleanses us and baptizes and fills us, with his Holy Ghost. You can't stop there. You need to continue to study. Continue to read your word. Continue to be faithful to the church. Continue to do what the word says. And whatever issues you have. You'll find it right there in the word. That will correct your behavior. Or your stinking thinking. Amen. The blood of Jesus cleanses. The residue of sin. The blood. The blood. What can wash away my sins? What can make me whiter than snow? Nothing but the blood. There is no residue left when he cleanses you with his blood. So, us that smoked. The blood cleanses. If you were drinking or lying or stealing, backbiting, nasty attitude, selfish, the blood will cleanse that. Mm -hmm. If it's all about me and my four and no more, the blood will cleanse that stinking thinking. Um, I have to step on you to get ahead. Oh, blood works on that too. Amen. We who have were schemers, mm -hmm. we had schemes to acquire what we have. Devious thoughts of hurting someone. Mm -hmm. Unhealthy relationships. Women don't stay in unhealthy relationships. If he's calling you out your name, my mama didn't birth no B word. I'm not your old lady. I'm not the H word. Oh, mm -hmm. my mama didn't birth that. Come out of those relationships. Ain't that much love in the world. And if he put his hands on you, bye, 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 bye. Sometimes it takes a while. I understand that. But seek with all your heart. 
for God to help you get a loose from that type of relationship because it doesn't end well. Non purposeful transactions. Mm -hmm. So you say, well, what is that? Well, people who um, you think that um, they think that they have your confidence. There is a situation now where somebody is um, in court trying to prove that they didn't steal the money for personal gain because they had a power of attorney. Mm -mm. You don't need those kind of transactions. You don't need to steal and undermine to get what you need. If you're in Christ, he said, the cattle on a thousand hills is mine. Ask for it. But you got to ask in his will with the right motive and the right purpose. Why do you want it? Why do you need it? You got four cars already. Why do you need the other car? Mm. A deceiver. That's straight from the playbook of Satan. That's what he does, deceives. What they used to say, straighten up and fly right. You don't have to be a deceiver. I, listen, I'm the bride of Christ. Amen. And a good husband will supply. He going to take care of his bride. And the word says, husbands love your wife. Mm -hmm. Go take care of me. He's not going to let me starve. He's not going to let me be without. And he's going to do it the right way. He ain't going to go out here and steal and hit somebody over the head to do it. But he's going to pray. And God is going to make a way. Amen. <clears throat> if you are in drugs or alcohol, God can deliver you. When I was a prodigal daughter, I, 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 I wanted to be like everybody else because I grew up in the church. Having to be there almost seven days a week. I said, oh, when I get grown. Started smoking and I didn't know about, you know, you to, for it to come out your nose and stuff, you had to inhale. And so I would just, and, um, you know, they were laughing at me. So I finally learned how to do it and got hooked. So when I came back to Christ, I still had that monkey on my back. And I prayed. And I said, if you will take this from me, I, I with everything in me, <clears throat> I will live for you. And it must have been about a week later. It, that, that, that week was, was hard. But I remember going to church that Sunday. And God delivered me. That's been over 30 some years ago. I ain't do no patches. Didn't have no chewing gum. God took the taste and the desire for it. And the test came. <clears throat> see, because back then you could smoke in your workplace and all that. Is when I was around it didn't even affect me. So I I certainly have a testimony. God can deliver you. He can he can cleanse the residue. I didn't have no residue when he brought me out. And those who are pimping <coughs> excuse me. You don't have to pimp to get what you want. To allow people to abuse you know you say, well I, I'm not, I'm I'm not hitting her. I'm not doing the wrong. No, but you allow somebody else to do it, so you just as guilty. Women. Mm -hmm. The best person you can have is Christ. Amen. So check the oil in your lamp. Yeah, you got a lamp, you got a wick, you look the part, but do you have the oil? Release all traditions of condemnation, and that's just what they are. They're traditions that continue to condemn you. Because if you don't dress like me, if you don't do it the way, if you don't say it, if, you know, if, 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 they're, they're, they're traditions of com, <clears throat> condemnation. Come into the light. 
Let the Bible teach you. Amen. Amen. Get into a good church, Bible-based church, where they're preaching the unadulterated gospel, where you are allowed to express yourself in worship and praise. Amen. And I guarantee you, the confusion you might have today, you won't have it tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Because we're ambassadors. How can I tell you what to do if I'm not doing it? If I've never had a struggle, if he didn't bring me out, if he didn't clean, cleanse me from my residue. Hey, hey. Reposition your safety in salvation. So I ask you again, are you safe or are you saved? And if you're saved, you are in the safety of his will. In his bosom, in his arms, in his grace, in his view. Praise God. Before I um, uh, end, I just want to give a shout out to Bishop Carther. Um, he, he is our brother in Christ, my husband, and I love him so much. And he precedes me on um, on Mondays at 12 o'clock. He comes on from 12 to 12.30, and then he joins in. So thank you, Bishop Carthur, for your prayers <clears throat> and for the shout-outs that he gives to me. Also, an old friend of mine, Ardina Smith. Um, I've been knowing her now for maybe about 11 years, and she continues uh, to stay with me and support me. Thank you for your prayers. I ask all to pray for me <clears throat> that whatever this attack um uh, that I, I guess it was airborne because I haven't um, kissed anybody but my husband, um, that um, the Lord would allow me to just pass it off. Um, then when they say into the sea of forgetfulness, I don't know about all that, but I just want it to go away. Amen. I also want to acknowledge Dr. Woodard, who um, I have um, not only loved then, but I love now and admire. She is a tremendous woman of God. Um, some years ago, she lost her only daughter, and I've watched her life. She held on to God. She didn't give up. She didn't give in. So we pray for you continuously all the time. And all the other ones who will join later, you are in our prayers. Be blessed. Enjoy this week. Keep me and mine in prayer as I keep yours. And don't forget, go out on Facebook or on my page. Um, we are still in um, early registration. The Lord uh, impressed upon me a couple years ago to do this conference. I've always wanted to do a women's conference. And it is going to be phenomenal. Not because of um, the icebreakers or the games we play, or the amenities that's there. But there's going to be a great outpour of his spirit. Amen. And that's for everybody that's in the house. There is going to be like none that probably I've seen before. That was my prayer. Amen. So come and join us. You still have time. Um, early registration will end on the 15th of this month. But you can continue to register until, I think, the end of July. Try to be a part of it. Amen. Amen. So until next week, um, I speak nothing but blessings over your life. Peace, joy, and happiness. God bless you. Richly.